This video is to demonstrate the risk ranking lookup in the e-course safety analysis in the process industry. The software used in this course for HAZARP recording and reporting was developed by the author using Microsoft Interactive Workbooks from Excel. A password protected copy can be purchased from the address in the contact list of the course. It allows access to all the cells in the spreadsheet except for the risk matrix risk ranking. The HAZOB record form, a copy of which is shown on this slide, is the most important tool to document the findings of the team during the PHA or process hazard analysis. As we are only considering one node in this example, we will only be completing the one spreadsheet and it will be automatically listed as node one on the spreadsheet in column one. Similarly, column two will automatically list the reference number of the parameter and guide word we entered in the possible deviation checklist. Three and four will be automatically transcribed from the checklist. In other words, no flow and flow com in the node completely stopped. The next column possible causes is considered by the team and when the facilitator is satisfied the team has reached consensus the scribe will type in the cause in this column. For the purposes of this video we're not dealing with all the parameters and guide words possible in this node. We've really just used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven examples of parameters and guide words to give us the deviations and the hazard. As for possible causes, the team decide on a potential consequence and again the scribe types in the decision. The next two columns, S for severity and L for likelihood, are a numeral for S and a letter for L, the likelihood. These two columns, when entered, automatically look up the risk ranking and enter from the risk matrix in this example a 2 with a yellow background. We now move to the next slide. Most companies that have risks inherent in their everyday operations produce an in-house risk matrix which is used to examine risks and mitigate them where possible. The risk matrix we are using in this e-course is extracted by permission from the International Electrotechnical Commission IEC and it is from Standard 61508-5, Edition 2. It also thanks the Commission for permission to reproduce information from its standard. All extracts are copyright of IEC. IEC has no responsibility for the placement and context in which the extract and contents are reproduced by the author, nor is IEC in any way responsible for the other content or accuracy therein.
The cause of a deviation which results in a hazard has a consequence impacting on people Assets, community, or the environment. This consequence is ranked for each category from a severity of one to a severity of four. In our case, for node 1, reference 1 of the record form, the team have decided that the consequence requires an S of 2, and a likelihood of D. This automatically enters, after looking up, a risk ranking of 2 and a yellow background, which indicates a high undesirable risk. This is found from the risk ranking table ranking spreadsheet shown here shows the different risk ranking blocks red for class 1 or for a very high intolerable risk which is not acceptable to a class 4 the light blue which is a low negligible risk the safeguards provided in our system and in this node will influence the risk ranking and we revisit the record form to enter a new likelihood in the L column resulting from the team's decision as to the effect of the safeguard. Note, the severity will probably stay the same after the safeguard is considered, but the likelihood will improve. The lookup table result in a new risk ranking, probably a 2B, or a risk ranking of a class 3, a medium and tolerable risk, which is the dark blue. From the intervention column, which is the third column shown on this slide, the team discuss whether any further action is required. If yes, then we will make recommendations which will be entered into the record form. We move to the next slide. We now enter the safeguards inherent in the system, having found what the risk ranking is of this hazard and the safeguards as we've shown in the previous slide must be identified to see if it can detect prevent and mitigate a hazard in this case the safeguard to prevent no flow is simple in that all that is required to prevent the battery limit or inline valves to be closed is for operator training and we also have the SCADA system, the supervisory control and data acquisition control system which will alert the operators as to the position of the valves and in so doing prevent their closure which would cause no flow. If the safeguard still 
gives us a risk ranking of one or two, which is intolerable, even after considering these safeguards, we then ask the team for recommendations, which are then entered into the record form. We then continue with node one and complete the entries in the record form until the HAZOP is complete. Note, it is important to save the spreadsheet periodically, otherwise the work obviously will be lost. The worksheet we are using here from IEC 61508 automatically populates the final spreadsheet, the recommendation list and status, and that spreadsheet will form part of the final HAZOP report, which is issued by the consultant when all the recommendations have been closed out. The final report issued by the facilitator will contain copies of some of the HAZOP spreadsheets. The HAZOP record form, which we've discussed in the previous slide, is covered in Lesson 8 of the e-course. At this stage of the course, we will not do a video of the what if PHA or the process hazard analysis, as it is in many ways identical in structure to a HAZOP. Lesson seven, first steps to safety and analysis, covers the what if procedure in full. Thank you.